fact, the environment is a powerful driver of human health. Today, it's not the bacterial environment we're dealing with, it's, it's the chemical environment. And particularly, the impact of toxic chemicals in the environment on the health of our children, and in my case, our grandchildren. And the common theme, though, at the end of the day is, is one of hope, namely that working together, we can make a difference, we can use our intelligence, we can use our gifts to make a difference to protect our children's health. So the big diseases in kids today are these diseases, asthma, learning disabilities, cancer, obesity, birth defects, autism, attention deficit disorder, allergies, multiple chemical sensitivity, all of these, all of these chronic diseases that have become so very common in American society and especially among kids. Um, the uh, childhood leukemia, for example, the good news is we actually can treat leukemia. 75 or 80 percent of children with this terrible disease recover from it, but the treatment, if any of you have ever been on a cancer ward, is dreadful. And the rate of childhood leukemia, the incidence, which is defined as the number of new cases per 1,000 children per year, has been rising pretty steadily at 1 percent per year since we started keeping national records in the early 1970s. So that's an aggregate increase of more than 30 percent um, over that span of time. Uh, hypospadias. Hypospadias is a birth defect that affects newborn baby boys. It's a shortening of the urethra. So when the pediatrician examines the little boy in the newborn nursery, looks at the child's penis, the opening is not at the tip where it's supposed to be, of course. It's back along the underside. In the worst cases, it's way back at the base. These data from the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta indicate it's, it's, not, a, it's not a good graph, but the, the raw data show that the rates of hypospadias have doubled uh, in the past uh, 30 years. And that's in Atlanta. It's been seen in uh, Europe. It's been seen here in Connecticut in the birth defects registry in this state. And put that together with the fact that sperm counts are falling and rates of testicular cancer are going up. There, that's three signals to me as a pediatrician, that something very strange is going on with male reproduction in this country, and it's happening much too fast to be genetic. It could only be environmental when the change is that rapid. Obesity has become epidemic. Uh, in it, it, Just like asthma, it most especially aff afflicts poor minority urban kids. In East Harlem, where our hospital, Mount Sinai Hospital, is located, 42 percent of five-year-old children entering kindergarten last year were obese. Think of the downstream consequences of that. When you think about increased rates of heart disease, diabetes, possibly cancer, a very definite increase in what's called all-causes mortality, the, this is a terrible price to pay. Some of the um, demographers who look at long-term trends in the American population have predicted that because of obesity, the current generation of children will be the first generation of children in 100 years to have a shorter life expectancy at birth than their parents. We must get on top of this. Some of it is exercise, some of it is diet, but a huge question is whether there might also be some chemicals that we put into the environment that make a difference. I mean, Americans spend billions of dollars every year on chemicals to reduce fat. Uh, isn't it possible that there might be some chemicals that put on fat? And we have an active research program going on at Mount Sinai that's looking into that. Kids' environment has changed. Uh, Bobby Kennedy mentioned this. There are now 80,000 synthetic chemicals registered with EPA. Here's some numbers. $11 billion were spent a few years ago um, on pesticides. Uh, 2.3 billion pounds of bisphenol A produced every year, most of it to go into plastics. BPA, by the way, was actually invented to be a synthetic estrogen. It's not exactly an accident that it's a, an endocrine disruptor. It was intended to be. And then it turned out that it had beneficial uses in plastics, and so it was produced in billions of pounds and put into plastics. The, you know, the chemical revolution, basically, has been a good thing. It's brought us antibiotics. It's brought us chemicals that clean up water. It's brought us the drugs that treat cancer. It's brought us motor fuels, building materials, all sorts of stuff that makes our lives earlier easier. We, we clearly can't go back to an earlier time when we didn't have those chemicals. The, so the problem is not chemicals per se. The problem has been the, the absolutely lackadaisical, unconscious or disconscious way in which we have failed to exercise any kind of responsible 
stewardship over the chemical revolution. We presume that chemicals are innocent. We just say everything is okay, be happy, bring them to market, put them into products, expose them to our kids. And the consequence, therefore, is that in national surveys that have been done by the CDC, in more focused surveys that have been done by the Environmental Working Group, 50, 75, 125 chemicals are routinely found in the bodies of virtually all Americans, in the cord blood of newborn infants, in the breast milk of nursing mothers, in the bodies of virtually all Americans of all ages, of all races, of all economic strata. We're all exposed to this stuff, and it's in us. It's part of us. And lastly, kids are more vulnerable because they have all those future decades ahead of them that we don't have. It means that if cellular damage is done or if mutations are caused in those first precious months of life when the child is so vulnerable, there's a long, long time for those uh, cellular changes to become manifest as cancer, as Alzheimer's disease, as Parkinson's disease, or, or something else. And that, too, is the subject of the work we're doing. Children are not little adults. That little phrase captures the whole notion. The bottom line, to wrap this thing up, is to tell you, as my colleagues have told you already, that diseases caused by toxic chemicals in the environment are preventable. When we couple good research with strong political action and broad action, broad will, broad enthusiasm across society, we can prevent these diseases.